Welcome everybody, it's Tractor Shoot here for a good game of StarCraft 2 to start this day off with some heavy casting. I believe we're going to have about 5 or 6 going up today. So why not start out with a little Platinum versus Diamond? Not a very bad matchup, fairly fair if you ask me. Platinum and Diamond might as well be the same league half the time. So we will introduce our players in the upper left hand corner of the map here. It looks like the internet icon with all the words coming out here. Wow, FTM will... YOLO Swag X will be playing as the Red Protoss in the lower right hand corner. His opponent's going to be the Blue Zerg. It is going to be Grumpy Smurf, my favorite Smurf. Actually, I didn't care for Grumpy Smurf, to be honest with you. I kind of like the chick Smurf. She was kind of hot. We are going to get a little bit of scouting happening with our good old Overlord for Grumpy Smurf. He's going to move himself out of the base here. Remember, the Friday challenge this week was to win a game without using Larva Inject, without using Warp Gate, and without using any reactors. So we did get a few submissions for that. So it should be fairly interesting here. And the one coming up for next week, as I was told, this one was a little bit easier than what people thought. So the one for next week, I'm going to have to make sure we wrap that baby up for something that's overly difficult, hopefully. <laughs> and maybe puts a little bit more of a challenge out there. Grumpy Smith slowly going to move that Overlord in there at the other end. We are going to start the gateway right at the entrance to his main base there. So look at the wall that off here. Not walking the wall off the bottom area early. In the meantime, the opponent not doing anything overly special. Not going to six pool him or nothing like that. And you can see their APMs do coincide. 222 to 148 to their skill level. So very well done there. And looking at the proto tab, still have obviously no spawning pool going down. Just the gateway, and we are droning the heck, and it's going to be hatch first as expected after he got up past the 10 drone mark there without any spawning pool. But good old YOLO swag going to move his way down here. Actually didn't know what YOLO meant for the longest time until finally my brother informed me it means you only live once. So now I know. Here we go, we are going to get the probe right in there. He's going to see there is no spawning pool. So he's either going to put some early pressure on, realizing it was has first, or he's going to expand himself more than likely. So we'll see how he's going to react to this here. And he does get out there, and we'll scout that it did go right down the natural. You've probably seen that initially to begin with anyways there. Yes, he can definitely see so. So he knows that's going on, but at the same time, we are getting a third hatch. Wow, at the three-minute mark, we got three hatchers on the field here. Two extras anyways, as, long as, as well as his main here. And gets right into a gateway slash cyber core. Stacks his pylons up, so very well done so far out of our good man Yolo Swag. At the same time, Grumpy Smurf not doing a bad job at all. Fairly interesting uh, build here. I'm very curious who wins this because I actually don't know who the submitter is. So it will be a surprise to me as 99% of the time games are submitted. The submitter is usually the winner. So like I said, we don't know that in this case here who it's the submitter is. And it does look like that spawning pool will slowly build. We won't get into one gas. Not going gas heavy by no means. So at least we believe we're not going to go with some any early tech. Probably stick with dog banelings. Or else maybe move into a muta road. Something that doesn't involve a ton of gas by no means here. Although he's going to macro pretty heavy. So you never know. He could put extractors on the field. And get that gas very quickly running on three hatch. Not even at the five minute mark. And those babies will be finished up there. So looking pretty good so far. In the meantime here, his opponent actually thinks that he's blocked the third, not realizing that the third's up here, so I hope that doesn't give him any, uh, any, uh, false readings here of how, how far ahead he might be or whereabouts he sits to his opponent there. Uh, in the meantime there, he did obviously look to expand, so he did do one of the two options there, which was not early pressure, so he did go for the expansion. He could have always, always dropped the proxy pylon down or even maybe cannon, uh, cannon up in behind the hatch first, which is probably my recommendation. This is very, very uh, easy to do and usually works 9 out of 10 times to get rid of the natural and uh, definitely keep your opponent off guard there. So there you go. We'll go in there. He does see that the spawning pool is finally laid down there. And with the expansion over there, he's maybe starting to wondering where a little bit of those extra minerals went. Maybe figuring that his opponent does have another expansion out. We'll soon find out how he reads into this here. He might actually be moving right towards it. Might get a little bit lucky. So very well done. This is exactly what he wanted to do. So very good. That's what you want to do with your scouting. At least get a reading off your opponent to know exactly where he is. And that it appears to be exactly what Yolo's swag did. So now he knows his opponent is on three base. So he is walling up like crazy over here. Has himself down with three gates going up the wall there. And a Pylon Mothership cores on the field to help out as well here. Chrono boosting the heck out of those probes. So not looking too bad so far here. Opponent meanwhile has his overlord coming up the left hand side. Another one sitting right over here so he does realize that he has expanded. So both these guys with very good intuition as to where their opponent is sitting at here. Metabolic boost is coming out. We are going right to a roach warren as expected and we are getting the second gas down finally. No gas on either of the expansions. And we do have the dogs basically moving around the map there, keeping map control, keeping an eye on where their opponent's at, has controlled the Naga Tower. So looking pretty good so far. Both these guys very even at this point in time here. Do have the good old uh, 
Warpgate technology just finishing up now, so Warpgate will finally be an option for him here. And these three dodges are going to move in there and see what kind of wall he's got set up, get a good idea there. And we'll see that that is the three gate super wall just getting in the warp gate so also sees the timing on that there's the early sentry helps for early defense with the z lot there to help finish that wall off there a few more z lots warping in metabolic boost just finishing up for his opponent here so looking pretty good so far and he's actually looking to move out here as three z lots and two sentries does he have two or three sentries i can't count probably three sentries there you go so three z lots three sentries few dogs moving around the map here they're not going to like what they see here so he's going to have to try and uh get defended up here pretty quick here mothership core does take out the one dog standing in the middle map so he definitely knows his opponent is coming and these three dogs he might want to look to get a few more units over here to help this out here and it does look like he is doing so as we do have a couple roaches coming out so we should have a queen a couple roaches and a few dogs might be able to do all right here they're going to look to get in there zealots are going to look to attack there does split off the roaches with a fairly nice force field there there's a couple more to block off those sentries as they work on that queen and they will actually finish that clean off fairly easily, so very well done there. And actually, mass recall. Wow, okay. Fair, apparently, he really wanted to keep those units, as he did mass recall back to his base to save himself two sentries. And why not this early in the game there? Might as well save every unit you can. But in the meantime, he did bring in three more zealots still down here. They're probably going to get cleaned out quite easily here. His opponent has amassed a fairly big army. Grumpy Smurf sitting on six dogs and 16 roaches now with the other ones uh, coming out of the base there. So he's going to chase those zealots back here. Not too sure how far back he wants to go. Still do not believe we have a forge on the field no forge on the field fairly surprising especially when you did expand early but he is getting the forge now maybe a little bit late on the forge if i have to give you any sort of tip not that i'm the man to give a platinum or diamond guy a tip i can't remember actually i believe that the zerg was um the diamond and protoss was the platinum but i could be dead wrong if the smitter wants to correct me you can definitely do so there we go, we are going to go to work on there, they will clean up, clean up the rest of those zealots, but we are warping a bunch of stalkers, they should be able to take care of the rest of this, but at the same time we have a lot more roaches moving in, could be a little bit trouble for Yolo Swag, he's backing off to wait till his other roaches uh, friends come over here, and of course Mothership Core will continue to chase them off here, Mothership Core obviously not doing a ton of damage up there, so won't be enough of a detour, or a deterrent. So he is going to move himself in there. We are going to work on upgrades right away there. They're going to go to work on the gateways here. He is trying to plant a cannon down there. Takes out one gateway, so very well done by Grumpy Smurf. Fairly good force fields to keep the rest of those roaches out there. Do like to see that there. He's going to warp in a bunch more stalkers here, which will definitely be the counter here. If you're trying to get the force fields, he's going to continue to lay those down to keep those roaches out there. Wouldn't mind seeing another force field go down somewhere around there. Um, but either way, he doesn't have the energy to do so. So these stalkers should be enough to clean this up here. We have no reinforcements and the photon overcharge goes down as well. So fends it off very decently done by Yolo Swag. He is using his swag today. Wowzer, good man. So he is still going to sit on his three bases here. Has he teched himself up? Yes, he does have layer technology. Double Evo on the field. So he's going to start pumping upgrades. Sport cars lying around here and there. So very well done there. And there we go. Going to start gassing up at the same time here. Every one of these roaches are going to accumulate in the middle of the map here relax themselves there and wait for the opponent to move out or at least find out the timing of his opponent moving out or he maybe he'll wait for the rest of his army and try one more time with these roaches here still no upgrade for the roaches but they are upgrading right now is getting the one car pace and the one for range as expected still nothing coming out of his uh nothing coming out of his layer technology as of yet and it does look like we are going right to colossi with thermal lance coming on its way here too we are also getting a bunch more gateways on the field here, so very decent, and another expansion, so gonna sit on 3 base, and trust me, if you are Zerg, you do not want to be playing Protoss when they are sitting on 3 base, and you definitely don't want to be playing Protoss when they are matching the same amount of bases you have. You usually want to be up at least one hatchery on your opponent. So he's going to move back in here, puts a spine core up at the front of his base as well here. And we are going to go Roach Hydra will be his choice. Yeah, in my opinion, I do play Protoss fairly often. I love playing against Roach Hydra just because you stack up your Colossi. Get a good front line of Zealots there, a few Stalkers. I find it's a very hard counter. Uh, and I find it usually very easy to beat a opponent that does go Roach Hydra. But then again, Roach Hydra is a very effective build, especially for any uh, Zerg player. I always recommend it. It's a fairly easy build to do and it's a very effective build. I just find it there's a very it's a very hard counter when you get put up against a lot of colossi with a bunch of frontline units. So we are going to move them all up here. So he may be looking to uh, a little bit of intuition that his opponent has a third. That's exactly what he's doing here. So he's going to go with the rocks here, make sure he has enough of a runway to get through here. That way he can get a full surround on if he chooses to do so. Does realize that his opponent can't see him. There's the Colossi on the field there. They're going to go to work on the roaches here. Should be fairly interesting to see who's going to win this. He's trying to move the roaches in as close as he can. Good force field to stop those roaches. Do like to see that. Wouldn't mind seeing the Colossi try and get a few more shots in there. They're going to clean up the dogs here that are getting right in on their stalkers. And very good force fields again, but he might 
did actually end up losing a Nexus at the same time here. So that will kind of suck for him, losing a $400 building like that. But at the same time, might not actually lose it if he gets these Colossi's in here. And they're not targeting Colossi's at all here. And he is also bringing the Zealots in to warp in there. And does bring in some... Uh, probes to help him out as well here and did actually fend that off so very well done i would say that's probably a win for yolo swag as it did look like he did get quite a few kills in there and he is starting to move himself out here so he is pushing a little bit with that good old colossi stalker type army here he's also getting his ground weapons coming at the same time here level two i do believe is on its way if i do recall no that's still level one well i saw the uh, level one already so it will be 12 stalkers three colossi two zealots against 14 roaches at this point here and i would honestly give that advantage to you yolo swag putting in two more pylons there so he's got some proxies going he's going to start pushing towards this third here only got the one spine car and a few roaches to go here so it will be very interesting but it does look like yolo swag might have enough push here and very good force fields fairly decent my good man getting the good split on all those roaches here and he's pushing hard here we'll end up taking out pretty much all these roaches very easily especially with those three colossi in the back there and the upgrade still hasn't quite finished so he is sitting without an upgrade of his weapons he's still managing to do this kind of damage here does clean up that army here it is 137 to 111 food count so still fairly even in the food count there's four cards gonna try and get a couple shots off here will clean this third up fairly easily so very well done there is forcing his opponent back here his opponent has made the third over here as well here or will be his new third i guess and he will look to clean up this hatchery quite easily here so very well done there he's going to clean up the rest of the broodlings here and that's exactly what's going to happen we are bringing in a couple more dogs to try and help him out here but at this point in time i think he's going to be in a little bit of trouble but does have 18 roaches on the field we'll definitely need to get that larva count up a little bit higher and there we go. I was going to pop out some more units here. Take a look at the production tab. Is a bunch more overlords. He did supply block himself, but his upgrades are coming in like crazy here. Does have himself working on two and two. Opponent's going right into a Twilight Cancel. So I do like the opponent. He is macroing at the same time as attacking. So very well done there. And does look like we are going to move this army out right into around the middle of the map here. Plant ourselves down one more proxy. And over here, it does look like we have ourselves a nice looking wall off here. Going to get a bunch more gateways in here. Second forge going down. Of course, there's that Twilight Council finishing up there as well. 32 roaches now on the field here. Very odd he didn't stick to the hydras there. I do know that he has a hydralis den that did go up. Yes, it is right there. So definitely didn't want to use the hydralis at all. Um, very interesting here. So this is a pretty much a straight roach build. Trying to get a bit of a surround. But when you got decent force fields going down there and you back off so the force fields can actually do something on that range, uh, we'll definitely help out here. And it does look like the roaches are actually getting pretty close here, but at the same time, he's got just a ton of stalkers. And with those four colossi now over here, not targeting the uh, colossi at all. They're not that he's able to get in too, too close to him here. But it does look like he's going to be in very big trouble here. They're going to push this roach uh, army right down to dead here. Only has five more larvas. Uh, larva sitting on the field here five corruptors have hit the field as well here so that will definitely be helpful but of course the stalkers will clean them up quite easily here there's a couple more coming in there stalkers will try and get them cleaned up here they're trying to go to work on the colossi don't think it's going to be enough though no it doesn't so ends up winning it again here he's going to push himself forward even more towards his opponent here and grumpy smurf got grumpy and has had enough of this all right grumpy smurf my condolences go out to you my good man my congrats to you ftm yolo swag and I will leave you with this. If you never shot a rifle before, please don't use my hiking gear. You be good. Don't hurt nobody. Peace.